What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and it's new release Saturday. We're going to take a look at a film that should have been new release Saturday last week, but as you all know, we've been getting caught up. We're going to take a look at the Netflix original, They Cloned Tyrone, starring John Boyega, Jamie Foxx, Tiona Paris, Kiefer Sutherland, David Allen Greer, and J. Alphonse Nicholson. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the introduction, it's new release Saturday, and we're still kind of getting caught up. We've got the weekday portion kind of caught up. Now we're trying to focus on getting the weekend stuff caught up. And today we're going to take a look at a new release Saturday film that should have been last week. And it's a Netflix original film called They Cloned Tyrone. And as our movie opens, Fontaine is a drug dealer in a retro futuristic neighborhood called The Glen with odds against him and a schedule that he keeps daily. His mother stays in her room all day and rarely speaks to Fontaine as he still mourns the death of his younger brother. Now Slick Charles is one of Fontaine's customers and he initiates a fight with one of his many sex workers that evening named Yo-Yo. And Fontaine goes to confront Slick Charles, who owes Fontaine money. He encounters Yo-Yo along the way. Now Fontaine is able to get some money from Slick, but he is then fatally shot by an opposing drug dealer named Isaac as he leaves the building. The next morning, Slick is shocked when Fontaine shows up for the money once again, alive and without any recollection of the previous night's events. The two find Yo-Yo in order to try and confirm Slick's claims about Fontaine's death, which begins to confuse Fontaine. He remembers when a man who was bleeding from a gunshot was kidnapped by a mysterious van which is now parked outside of a trap house. Fontaine goes inside the house in order to investigate with Slick and Yo-Yo, who voice their concerns. They end up discovering an elevator that leads to an underground lab. Inside, a white scientist with an afro tells them that the operation has gone widespread. Slick snorts a mysterious white substance that he thinks is cocaine, but he ends up laughing forcefully and accidentally kills the scientist after Yo-Yo causes a small explosion. Before they leave, the trio discover a corpse lying on a table that is identical to Fontaine. The next morning, Fontaine breaks into the house again, only to find that the entrance to the lab has disappeared. Later that day, at a fried chicken restaurant, every person in the building begins laughing at the exact same time, which makes Slick Charles realize that the fried chicken, which has been said to have a new secret ingredient, contains the same white substance that he had snorted previously. Investigating further, Yo-Yo tries to seduce the restaurant manager, who coincidentally looks very similar to the scientist that Slick killed. She discovers that the entirety of the Glen is being surveilled and recorded. They later discover that the substance is also being used in grape drinks and hair products for black women. Through some hidden messages from an alcoholic that Fontaine encounters daily, they discover a local black church where the group becomes unsettled by disturbing lyrics that the churchgoers collectively sing as a result of the grape drink's influence. After the service finishes, the group discovers an elevator in the altar. 
they discover that the lab facility spans the entire Glen area, and they witness black people being subjected to disturbing behavioral experiments. They find that the lab has clones of many of the Glen's residents, including Fontaine and Slick Charles. They also watch the predominantly white scientists control the clones through certain psalms and visual stimulation. They exit through a local strip club after Fontaine accidentally sets off an alarm. The DJ brainwashes the clubgoers with a song and then forces them to chase the trio. A white man named Nixon and a Fontaine clone named Chester show up in order to halt the club goers. Nixon reveals that scientists like him conduct experiments on impoverished and predominantly black populations, including the Glen, in order to allow the operation to go unnoticed and supposedly achieve peace in America. Nixon then uses a trigger word which causes the entire crowd to follow his commands with the exception of Yo-Yo. Nixon tells Fontaine to put a pistol into his mouth, which he does. Yo-Yo then pleads for his life and Nixon uses another trigger word to release them from their hypnotic state. The entire crowd was conscious the entire time, but unable to control their actions. Despite the fact that Yo-Yo was a witness who was entirely unaffected, Nixon still threatens to use his control on the crowd again if they don't stop their investigation. The next day, Fontaine falls deeper into a state of despair after discovering that his mother whom he had never actually seen, was just a voice on a tape recorder. Yo-Yo decides to take matters into her own hands, but has her identity accidentally exposed and is subsequently kidnapped by Nixon. Fontaine then comes up with a plan where Slick and Isaac rescue Yo-Yo while he fakes his own death in order to sneak into the lab undetected. Fontaine lets Slick and Isaac in to storm the lab with numerous residents of the Glen. They free the black people being experimented on, including the clones, while Yo-Yo frees herself and finds Slick. Fontaine is overpowered by Chester and is then taken to an older version of Fontaine who is revealed to be the real Fontaine. He explains that he is helping scientists create peace by literally whitewashing black people and turning them into white people through mind control and generational breeding. The racially motivated murder of Fontaine's little brother by a police officer prompted him to start making the clones. After the elder Fontaine claims that the country would be better with assimilation rather than annihilation, Fontaine uses Nixon's trigger word on Chester and has him shoot the original. Meanwhile, Yo-Yo stalls Nixon from killing her before Slick shoots him in the head. The facility entrance to the church opens up spilling naked clones out into the public and exposing the country's secret operation. Afterwards, Yo-Yo announces her retirement from her job and the trio decide to head to Memphis in order to further expose and stop the operation. Meanwhile, back in Los Angeles, a man named Tyrone, who is identical to Fontaine, lives the exact same lifestyle as Fontaine. While watching television with his friends, they see one of Fontaine's clones appear on television and all realize in that moment that Tyrone is a clone of Fontaine 
as our movie comes to its close. This was a very trippy film. And at first I'm watching this and I'm like, where is this going? What's, what's its MO? What's its motive? What's its drive? What's its story? Because it's another one of those films that I just saw listed online and the cast listing, John Boyega, Star Wars, the sequel trilogy, Jamie Foxx, Kiefer Sutherland, David Alan Greer, all intrigued me. Okay, I'm going to check this movie out. They cloned Tyrone, so obviously it's a movie got something to do with cloning. Let's see what's going on here. And then the layers of the onion begin to unravel, and you end up with this Groundhog's Day, um, Truman Show, They Live style of like hodgepodge of movie where you've got people living the same life, the same routine every day. You've got corporate America trying to brainwash the citizens of the country. You've got one or two people pulling all the strings, orchestrating everything that happens in a person's life. And you're just watching this stuff unravel. You're like, dude, while I recognize some of these elements from other movies, this is a trip. You know, it it was an intriguing film, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought John Boyega did amazing as the leading man. I thought um, Tiona Paris did a great job as Yo-Yo. Jamie Foxx was outstanding as Slick Charles. Like, everybody fit their character to a T. You know, you got Kiefer Sutherland as Nixon, the man who's kind of behind everything. He is the wonderful Wizard of Oz, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain type of thing. It's... It was a mind trip. It really was. And if you guys have Netflix and you haven't watched this yet, I definitely recommend that you give it a view because it it was interesting. It was intriguing. It was well-written, well-acted. And again, even though there were a lot of elements that I recognized from other movies, the way they integrated them into this one story, I thought was so brilliantly done. When it comes to my rating for They Clone Tyrone, I'm going to give it four out of five stars. Again, everything that I've already said, the acting, the writing, the integration of elements, the soundtrack, like, it was very well done. Kudos to Netflix for this one. If it does reach to physical media, I will be purchasing it, adding it to my collection. What do you guys think? Those of you that have seen They Cloned Tyrone, let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Let's have that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction that I'm always asking you guys for in the comments below. And make sure you guys stay tuned in later on this afternoon right here to the Casa D18 Studios channel, to the Jeff Meacham Network, and across the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media, as it is time for another one of our Watch Lawn events. And today we are going to be covering SummerSlam, live from Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. Myself and the Heeb man James Hebert will be on the call this afternoon. No simple man Noah Foster today, as he is actually on a bus heading to Ford Field so that he can witness the biggest party of the summer, live and in person. We wish Noah the best. We hope he enjoys the show. And we hope that you guys enjoy myself and James Hebert as we call the action, give some predictions, give our instant reactions all across the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media. And then immediately following SummerSlam, again, Across the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media, 
It'll be time once again for the Saturday night shenanigans that are open mic night. Myself, the West Coast professor, Jeff Meacham, the Hebe man, James Hebert, and whoever else decides that they want to waltz into the club, step up to the microphone and engage us. Speak of professional wrestling will be allowed to do so as we engage in the shenanigans that are open mic night. And then I'll be back on Monday right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And we're going to keep on going with the movies hand-selected by my girlfriend. We will be taking a look at Sleepers, starring Jonathan Tucker, Jeffrey Wigder, Joe Perino, Brad Renfro, Kevin Bacon, Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, Billy Crudup, Ron Eldred, Jason Patrick, Brad Pitt, and Minnie Driver. You don't want to miss out on any of that content right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, on the Jeff Meacham Network, across the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media, SummerSlam Watch Lawn coverage, Open Mic Night, Sleepers as we kick off next week's week of movies, and so much more you don't want to miss out on. So make sure you smash that like button, make sure you subscribe, make sure that notification bell is turned on. So you don't miss out anytime a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or anytime we go live. As is the case with Stat Boy Sports Bar, Open Mic Night, Pay-Per-View PLE Watch Long Coverage, etc. Share these videos with your family, friends, loved ones, co-workers, movie fanatics, cinephiles in your life, fans of John Boyega, fans of Jamie Foxx, fans of Kiefer Sutherland, fans of David Allen Greer. Anybody you can think of that would enjoy this content in this video, share it with them as it's the only way we're going to keep my visibility up in YouTube's algorithms now that we are, in fact, a monetized channel right here on the platform. Thank you once again to everybody out there who joined me and tuned in today. It means so much more to me than you guys will ever know. And I will see you guys next time. Now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way.